Yo guys, welcome back to the channel. First of all, I do want to apologize for not uploading a video sooner. But rest assured, I was playing the game. I was making sure that before I make guides which are more specific to characters or more detailed guides for the game, I do want to make sure that I am quite knowledgeable to make a guide myself. So at this point in the game, I think most of us are reaching endgame which are high level characters, high union level. But this video will also be good for those who are starting. For those who are UL40 below, it's still fine. This video will still be able to help you out. So for this video, the guide that I'm going to make is a more generalized guide for building your characters in Wuthering Waves to be ready for endgame. So what is endgame in Wuthering Waves? For now, endgame is beating the hologram bosses. Where, where is it? There we go. Beating the hologram bosses, which are probably the most difficult content in the game right now aside from the hologram bosses there's also the tower of adversity i haven't done much of the last stages of the tower of adversity i did clear the first and second stages but this one i haven't really cleared this I haven't done enough as you can see here and uh yeah we'll talk about that more later because this video is about building your characters to be ready for end game so yeah let's just get into it so how do you build your characters for endgame? First and foremost, let's have Havoc MC here as an example, is choosing the right weapon for your character. For example, I do have the crit rate weapon Emerald Genesis. I do like crit rate weapons for this game. I think crit rate is the most important stat in the game because it's the hardest one to get. If it's a crit rate weapon, it's really good. It helps play around the RNG of the crit rates in your echoes, meaning you don't have to have crit rate on every single subset for your echo that you have for example i have one here that doesn't have a crit rate and i think i do have low crit rate rolls like this one but still having a 70 percent crit rate that's how much helpful a crit rate weapon is in this game it just it just helps focus on more stats other than crit rate because you already have some in your weapon so as much as possible if it's a main dps i do want to choose the crit rate weapon so for example another example rather is ling yang right here i do have the battle pass weapon which is the stone art and uh there are free-to-play options for Ling Yang as well. Like, for example, where is it? It's the Origin Type 4, which has the crit damage. But if you look at the weapon passive right here at level 5, or sorry, at rank 5, when dealing basic attack damage, heals 1.9 of Resonator's max HP. This effect can be triggered one time every 3 seconds. So that's good and all. It's healing. Good and all. Not that much. 1.1. But the main thing why you want to run this for Ling Yang... This is a free-to-play option, by the way. A free-to-play option. I haven't done this myself because this account isn't free-to-play. And I do have other options. You can run this 5-piece Rejuvenating Glow set. If you look at the set here, it increases attack of all party members by 15% for 30 seconds upon healing allies. So for a main DPS, you mainly want to run crit stats. Nothing else is available. Just go for the attack stat. In my opinion, at least, this is for mainly a main DPS. So for the next one... I briefly talked about the 5 piece set. If you're building a character, the goal is to have a 4, a 1 cost 4, and a 2, 3, and 1, 1. So this is called the 4, 3, 3, 1, 1 build. This is what everyone should strive for in the end game while having a crit rate above 70. If you don't have that yet, if you can't do that yet, you can always just go 4, 4, 1, 1, 1. But that is a lot weaker than a 4, 3, 3, 1, 1 because this offers a huge boost the double three cost offers a huge boost so as you can see here at level 15 it's only 12.2 attack percentage and for a havoc damage bonus it's the same with an attack percent if ever you're running an attack percent so i think running two elemental damage bonus is better than having an attack here because you already have to attack under cost ones and while having a setup like this you need to have at least 70 crit rate 70 or more crit rate yeah be mindful of that and of course the set that you're gonna use for your main character is the elemental set that you have for example my havoc mc is havoc so we're running the five piece havoc set or support character or sub dps character like like sanwa now you can mix and match you can opt to go for a more offensive route so you put five piece of glacio instead of moonlit clouds but i do want my sanwa to offer more than just uh being a sub dps if you look at the buff that this echo set provides after using outro skill increases the attack of the next resonator by 22.5 percent for 15 seconds so just go outro scale and you get a buff and sanwa with the way I built my Sanwa, it's a bunch of energy regen so that we can spam our skill, just ult, and then skill, or the circuit, and then switch out. That's it for the echo set. Just do remember that you can run 44111, but for an end game ready build, you need to go 43311 while having at least 70% crit rate. Alright, so next that I want to talk about is the talents or whatever you call these. You do want to level all these up because uh, this provides quite a bit of buffs. So if you see here, Havoc damage attack the latter parts are 
bigger buffs so that's nice to have but main thing is the talents like these so for example in dark surge state have a damage bonus increase by 20 percent also the multipliers for the skills increase as you level it up basic knowledge and every character has their own priority to level up so for example my havoc mc the priority to level up in with havoc mz is the 40 circuit the resonance liberation resonance skill and basic attack or you can go basic attack and resonance skill but in my opinion if it's a main dps character then you're gonna level it all up equally anyway right now for my two main dps that is the case you do want to level up all of it and that differs from character to character so for example we have baiji here 40 circuit resonance liberation and resonance skill so for verena it's different it's 40 circuit and resonance liberation for a sub dps like sanwa right here same thing you want to level up what's important for example 40 circuit resonance liberation and resonance skill also the interest because you're going to be doing that a lot you need to know which to prioritize or which to level up because every character is different all right so for this part i want to talk about the team comps that you have so for example i have my main dps which is ling yang now it really depends who your main dps is ling yang does more basic attack so sanwa is really good because if you use your forte circuit on ling yang it just activates the lion dance state and you do basic attacks basically you can use verena almost with any team comp it really depends who your main dps is uh, what characters can support your dps better so mainly buffers and a sub dps that can buff us well that is the formula that i have for my team comps as of right now is a main dps a moonlit character because my jan shin is also running a moonlit set and a healer character and all of them can support or buff character one way or another you can opt to run a sub dps with elemental set as well like for example jan shin we can always run instead of jan shin like for example yang yang as a sub dps you can also go down that route so yeah you can offer a more damage focused sub dps like this one right here with the five piece elemental set but for me i do want my sub dps to offer something when it goes off the field and goes back to the main dps that's why i'm running the moonlit energy so once again that is my formula one dps one moonlit energy and one rejuvenating glow character and that's it for team comps all right so for the last part of this video you need to practice your character basically how his kit works or how your main dps kit works and how the team comp works out, how the rotation works out. You gotta practice that because it's really different for every team. And it's different depending on your main DPS as well. For example, let's just go ahead and do this real quick. Let's do the difficulty 4. I don't have my echoes level up max. Why? <laughs> let's run that shoot back. I missed. <laughs> A few moments later. For example, Lapilumen here. Why am I so dumb? <laughs> All right, so this is the actual first first try, and I, as I mentioned earlier, as I mentioned earlier, Lampy Lumen for Ling Yang is very good because it offers where is he? It offers AOE damage, with, which Ling Yang barely does. So having an AOE option, in your echo skill is really good for some characters like Ling Yang. Let's just go beat this guy up real quick. To use our skill. Fly up. Go to Tanwa, user old skill, dodge, 40 circuit, dodge, perfect. Let's use our echo skill again. Easy. Easy. Yeah, this is the actual first try, guys. Zero deaths. Zero death. Now, uh, what's that? Okay, then we. I can't see him. All right, there we go. So, Sanwa's old skill. This is why I like Sanwa as a sub DPS. You can just quickly use her skills and then switch back to your main DPS like that easy charge up the 40 circuit and then we go to verena perfect perfect charge up our 40 circuit again sorry not 40 circuit we use our echo skill then get the buff from the weapon and then we use our there we go. easy 
light work. What? You did it again. We get our 40 circuit up one more time and then we wrap it up. There we go. Arena. Okay, I guess we have to fly up. <laughs> Charge our Concerto energy so we can out through skill. There we go. Good enough. We're back pulling, yeah. That is a variable attack that I didn't carry once again. Echo skill. And then we use a. Oh. And there you have it. That is basically how you practice your rotations, when to use this character, when to use this character, and whatnot. That is just an example, and uh, that is the worst time that I did. So beat this guy in 3 minutes and 37 seconds, and I can't believe I actually did it worse. But that's fine. That is just for a video as, as just an example of how to practice your rotations for your main DPS, sub DPS, and your support there. And that's it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed the video as much as I did. And if you did, please don't forget to leave a like. This is a general guide to building your characters to be ready for endgame. And I do hope you learned something new from this video. And if you have any further questions or violent reactions, please don't forget to comment down below. Don't be shy. And I'll be sure to read your comments. Last but not least, Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We'll be doing more Wuthering Waves content in the future. And character-specific guides will come out soon. Yeah, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching once again. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.